Hello, and welcome once again to the Dental Marketing Mastery Series. This podcast is brought to you by dentalwebcontent.com and New Patients Incorporated. I'm Howie Horrocks, the founder of New Patients Incorporated. Along with me once again is my friend and partner and the president of New Patients Incorporated, Mark Dilatush. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our podcast. We've got... uh, We've got an interesting topic today. I think, Mark, we're going to discuss uh, the uh, virtues and attributes of online and offline marketing and uh, why you really can't do much for the long run without both of them. It's kind of like peanut butter and jelly, huh? It is exact. Well, some people like peanut butter sandwiches, I guess. And some, <laughs> and some people like jelly sandwiches. But I think the majority of people get the greatest benefit of having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Absolutely. Right. So, so here's, here's, and and we get this question constantly. um, And in our work, when we're allocating budget resources. So let's just actually, let's just use an example, Howie. Let's, let's go through actually a pretty common example. Um, Dental practice is doing, I don't know, 900000 a year. Wants to get to $1.1 million, um, you know, has a website. We can debate whether it's a good one or not, but let's just say they have a website. They have reasonable positioning uh, for SEO. Uh, they're not really doing anything but online. They're just, maybe they have a PPC campaign that's a year or two old. So they... Actually, that's that's very common. They come to us and they say, "Well, something's broke because it's not it's not doing what it used to do." I'm not getting all of my patients from my online activities. What's right. wrong? <laughs> right. So we have to kind of slow them down a little bit and say, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa wait, is, hold on a second. You know, virtually every successful online business that you've ever heard of think about that for a second that's a pretty tall claim right so geez mark that's a a pretty bold statement every successful online company i know like little companies like amazon oh how about google and google and yahoo and and let's go with monster.com and match.com even facebook Right? Yeah. What do they all have in common? They all got to you initially offline. Yep. Every one of those companies initially interested you in their online product or their online property offline. You probably saw it on TV. You might have heard it on the radio, seen it in print. Maybe something was mailed to you. Whatever. doesn't matter. I still get Google mailings. Right. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> these companies, these large, large companies, companies the size that you want to grow to, <clears throat> these companies got it a long time ago. They understood that their online properties would generate their own traffic organically when somebody searched for the services they were offering but they also realized that they can drive online traffic or they can drive offline traffic either to the phone directly without going to their website or directly to their website from which they can do business there so <clears throat> when a dentist comes to us and says i have a nine hundred thousand dollar practice and i have um, you know what i think is a nice website and it looks like it's coming up on the first page of google and when i do a search and um you know i have uh you know a ppc campaign if for implants and invisalign and it's just not working like it used to this is becoming more and more and more and more. We're hearing this story, I'm not going to say constantly, but I'm going to say a lot more this year than we did last year. So I think it's best for everybody to analyze first, why are we getting more of these inquiries? Well, <clears throat> reason number one is, is that you never want to put all your eggs in one basket. 
you never want to put all your marketing budget just into online. That is the first mistake that was made. The second mistake is um, with, I'm not saying that PPC ads are a mistake. We do them. We manage PPC campaigns. We're, obviously, we don't think they're a mistake when used properly. But <clears throat> when you do PPC, you almost have, when you do paper, for the people out there who are wondering what the heck PPC is, PPC is short for pay-per-click, where, where you pay Google or you pay Facebook or whatever to distribute your message when people search for it, or directly, in the case of Facebook, directly onto the timeline of people immediately surrounding your practice. When you pay for that, you almost have to promote one single element of your practice because you don't have enough room to promote more than one. So what happens is, is the doctor over allocates the majority of their advertising dollars for a very finite market, a share of the market, like implants, for instance. That's a classic example. Implants or Invisalign is another classic example. So if you take 50% of your ad budget and you only promote implants and Invisalign, and you do that consistently in any U.S. market. I don't. It doesn't matter what market it is. If you do that consistently in about 12 to 18 months, you're going to see the top of that bell curve and you're going to come sliding down to a crashing halt. Or, or if you're successful at it, this is the best case scenario, actually. If you're successful at it, other dentists around you are going to start doing the same thing, driving the perp click price up. So the more competition there is in a PPC campaign, the higher your cost. So as your costs go up and your results go down, you end up looking at everything at the end of the year and then calling New Patients Incorporated. Yeah. That's what happens, okay? <laughs> That's exactly how it all happens. It's just you know, I mean, I mean, for, for that kind of a medium, it, it, it looks bleak, you know? Hey, your expenses are going to go up if you succeed. Right, right. So, And then you're going to come crashing down. You know, that's a bummer. That That is a bummer. So now there's ways to mitigate this, obviously, because, again, we manage – we're not down on PPC campaigns. We're certainly not down on the Internet. We have a an, an enormous Internet department and, a, and a, 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 like a sub-department within that for PPC campaigns. So it's – and we manage them actively today. So it's – so here's the point. The point is, is that you never want to put the majority of your marketing budget into one or two little niches. All right. You really want to put the majority of your marketing budget to where the consumer is. And the consumer, believe it or not, is still in family dentistry. The consumer never left. Dentists left. Okay. Right. But the consumer didn't leave. Okay. The consumer is still sitting there going, you know what I want? I just want a really nice local dental practice that I can trust, that I can bring my whole family to, whether it's my children who are six and 11, myself, or even my husband when he stops whining about his, his you know, the, his, the fear of pain of going to the dentist or even my mom and my dad and one of them has dentures and one of them needs dentures. I just want one place to go where I can, you know, conveniently uh, schedule my appointments. Um, someone I can definitely trust and um, someone I can relate to. That's what I want. And you know what? That hasn't changed in the last 30 years. Right. You know, hmm. and we noticed this a long time ago, and we, we had a whole separate podcast about this, but we've known about it for years. We, we call it the niche trap. Right. Where, you know, and, and, and now the niche trap is all, has basically moved online. So if all you're promoting is uh, uh, implants and Invisalign, for example, and, or sedation, dentistry, or whatever, you know, that's all that, that your target market is going to think that you do or you're limited to that or you only want those kind of cases and and you're ignoring that that vast and deep uh, family market right and normally the doctor will call and say you know hey i'm doing a ppc campaigns for whatever let's say say invisalign and implants and i the question is always well are you getting enough implant and invisalign cases the answer is almost always yeah i'm i'm doing my fair share but the rest of my practice is tanking 
Right. Well, that's because you're not promoting it. <laughs> okay. You're only promoting Invisalign, right, and implants. So, so obviously the solution is is to blend and orchestrate and 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 have a message for family, and then complement the message with family. Uh, with a portion of your budget. For instance, when, when before this podcast, we went and looked, and our clients that do PPC campaigns spend no more than 25% of, uh, of their annual budget on PPC. Now, if you talk to these dentists that keep calling here, it's like 75, 80, 90% of their total budget is going into PPC campaigns. So I think what happened over the years is it, you know, because you can log on to Google and for a half hour, you can take a course on doing your own Google campaign, right? So it's easy, right? So dentists were logging on and they were, oh, I can do this. And they set up their ad and they set up their keywords and their key phrases and they put their budget in and they watched it, you know, they watched their analytics and they tinker and tinker and tinker and tinker. And pretty soon they lose sight of what they're really trying to accomplish until they, again, you know, you know, they call New Patients Incorporated. Hey, I'm getting my fair share of Invisalign and implant cases, but the rest of my practice is drying up. How can you help me? And the answer is reallocate what you're overspending on implants and Invisalign and get that message back in the hands of the local consumers to drive family, family patients. Use the additional revenue as things turn around and you can invest more money in PPC if you want. If you want to do more of the fun stuff or maybe even branch out into sleep apnea or sedation or some other niche, right? Um, one thing we know for sure with PPC is that the more of these niches you promote, the longer the bell curve is for the investment. It's very similar to radio. Like when we promote um, dentistry on radio for dentists, we never have one script. We always have like five or six and we rotate them in throughout the airtime so that they don't experience the sharp bell curve down. Right. And the reason for that is that you can't tell the practice's whole story in, in one 60 second spot. You can't even tell it in five, but you can tell more about the practice with a rotating uh, ro five rotating topics all throughout the ad buy and and this this avoids you know placing you into that niche trap that we talked about right and there's I mean there's other reasons too like um, well so specifically for implants implants are difficult in that you almost have to like in order to create a, a PPC campaign for dental implants, you almost have to be diagnosed and understand the benefit of dental implants before you would type it into your Google search screen. Yeah. The percentage of people in the United States who have no clue what a dental implant is, is far greater than those who do. <laughs> okay. So I'm not saying it doesn't work because clearly it works, right? And clearly a lot of dentists are doing it, but all they're doing is driving up their bid for the click. And the conversion, it's, it's not, it's not, it's harder than you think. Maybe that's how I should put it. You know, it's just, it's more difficult than you think to, to create a consistent, producing, effective PPC campaign on one subject. The more subjects you add, the longer your bell curve will be. And if you're, if you have five or six of those subjects, Let's say a, an average bell curve for a subject is, let's say, six months. Well, if you, if you promote implants for 12 months, then months 7 through 12, you spent either the same or more amount of money for less of a result. That's the back end of the bell curve. But at six months, if you switched it over to Invisalign and then six months later switched it over to a sedation and then six months later switched it over to cosmetic dentures and then six months later, you guys get the idea, okay? You, you basically, you, you never hit the back end of the bell curve. You just have a, uh, the beginning of each bell curve as each one grows. You can even do these simultaneously. That's why, <laughs> that's why most of the time, you, you know, you, you might be better off with a professional handling 
um, either your Google PPC campaigns or um, Facebook. Uh, PP, they're, they're more PPI campaigns, paper impression campaigns with Facebook. Anyway, the bottom line is, is that too many of you are way, way, way too far allocated into online. You're ignoring offline and inevitably you're going to hit that result. You're going to hit that bottom and, um, you know, then maybe, you know, you'll call or you'll need to change direction. We can tell you where you need to, you need to go back to offline. Just like Google, just like Yahoo, just like Facebook, just like every other successful website company ever in the history of ever, um, and they're still doing it. They were on the Super Bowl in their commercials. They're they're driving online traffic via offline promotion. Right, and it just makes sense. We've been seeing this for years. Whenever we say, for example, we launch a mail campaign for a client, and 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 what happens to the uh, the hits to to their website? During that campaign, well, they go up. Well, yeah, that's so in some cases driven, triple. Right. They're, they're being driven from, from the offline promotion to the person's website, the dentist's website. And, and it, it's a, a direct correlation. We see it all the time. Yeah. Now, some of the things, some of the, the things that you can do is to, you know, just to kind of control yourselves a little bit is that, is that remember, uh, I don't know how many podcasts ago, probably 30 or 40 podcasts ago, we talked about budgeting, and I believe in that budgeting podcast, we talked about budget allocation. And I believe in that podcast, we mentioned that, you know, when you figure out your total annual budget, you multiply your previous 12-month revenues times 5%. Use that as a, use that as a goal. So let's, let's go back to our scenario. Doctor's doing $900,000 a year. Multiply that times 45%. You end up with 45K. The doctor's got 45K to spend next year on marketing what you don't do is put 45k into online what you would do is maybe take 10 percent of that go internal and then split the remainder 50 50 you could do that now remember you have a website that needs to be good you have seo that needs to be continual as google changes their algorithms you may want to you may want a um, uh, review and reputation management piece of your online strategy. You may want online scheduling as part of your online strategy. Um, you may want to dabble into social media and keep your social media properties up to date uh, as part of your online strategy. And then complement everything with the right offline promotion to drive targeted offline local consumers either to your phone or to the website or both that's what you would need to do to fix the problem because when doctors call us with this problem that's i'm not going to say we do all of that with every one of them but i'm going to say that's pretty common that's a pretty common recipe for how we take those doctors who have gone way too far and balanced all we're doing is rebalancing them they just they they went too far left and we're just balancing them and bringing them back to center yep that's exactly right so if any of you um couple of announcements um if any of you are on facebook and you would like to join the discussion uh, we have an, a new group. It's called Dental Marketing Mastery Community. There's actually quite a few people there now, almost 300, I guess. Um, conversations are happening. Uh, we have downloads there. We have podcasts there. We have access to all of our, um, our podcast properties, uh, our book download. Everything's there. Our blog. Well, yeah, everything. Access. Yeah, every, and and actually, I'd say at least eight or ten of our team is there um, to answer any questions you might have um, about anything, any kind of marketing that you're doing. Right now, we had a discussion about internal marketing referrals. Um, you know how when to ask, when not to ask, <laughs> um, and how to <clears throat> how to incentivize without you know feeling schmarmy about it 
Um, and that was the last podcast we did, I think, Howie. That was the um, yeah. That was the social versus transactional relationship uh, podcast that we did. So there's all kinds of conversations going on. Again, it's Dental Marketing Mastery Community. Just look for us on Facebook and uh, ask to join, and I'm sure we'll get you right in. Yep. Sounds good. Well, I guess uh, that about wraps up this one. Hey, Mark? Yeah. you. Uh, it's starting to be spring here. Yeah. Actually, uh, we're going to be in the 80s here in Vegas by Friday. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, thank you all for, for listening in, and uh, we will see you again soon on our next podcast. Thank you. Bye-bye. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast today. You can find more podcasts on our YouTube channel, on Stitcher, and iTunes. Also on our websites, dentalwebcontent.com and newpatientsinc.com.